Now, do you remember the lion's share of our thought here was really invested here? How many terms are there? Okay, now that's not a bad thing to do. You really need to think carefully about how many terms there are in any sequence or series. Um, that is a very, very worthwhile thing to understand. However, you do not need to know how many terms there are in this series to solve this question. Because we have how do you do terms. this? Okay, now, for two reasons, right? Firstly, we know what the last term is. I'm going to show you a technique that, that does that. In fact, yeah, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll show you that first, because it is the last, I'll, I'll make the last technique the fastest one, okay? So here we go. What we're going to do is I'm going to try and take advantage of the fact that I know what the last term is. I want to point out to you, though, um, the formula that we learned for when you know the first term and you know the last term, what kind of series does it apply to? It applies to APs, right? What was our formula? I'll give you a clue. It started with N on 2. What happened after that? It's just A plus L, right? First term, last term, there's the pairing thing that happens. This was the story with Gauss, remember? Okay. Now, unfortunately, you can't simply do, well, you know, Unfortunately and obviously, you can't do that here because this is a GP and pair, terms do not pair up as simply as they do in an AP, right? So I can't just use this, but I can still take advantage of knowing what the last term is. Here's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to, um, so maybe you want to put like a little subheading, right? Using the last term. So method one was using the formula. Method two is using the last term, okay? Now, the way I'm going to show you, there is a way to, like there's an equivalent to this, but for GPs, which I've deliberately not shown you because it doesn't come up that often, but it does come up. Um, and also, the reason why I didn't show you is because you can get it out from the formula, which you already know, okay? So I want you to recall this. Okay, so, so this is our, our launching point last time, right? I want to take this and I want you to notice if you can look hard enough, the last term, inverted commas, last term, the last term of the GP is hiding in the formula. It's not obvious, but it's hiding there. In fact, you should remember, when we developed this formula the first time, right, we ended up getting a first term and a last term, and all those intervening terms in the middle, they did cancel out. So the question is, where is the last term? Where is he hiding in there? Let me help you see him again. Okay. Let's expand the numerator. I get this. Do you agree with that? That's just, I've just expanded the brackets, right? The last term is almost there. The nth term of this series, right? Where is he? Where is he? What is the nth term of this series? AR, N minus it's AR, N minus, N minus one. 1, right there, N minus 1 terms. Well, I almost have it there on the numerator. Do you see it there? How do I turn this guy into AR to the N minus 1? <coughs> And the answer is, this is how many lots of the rate common ratio? Answer, n, n lots of them, right? If I want to have n minus 1 lots, I just have to take one of the r's out, right? Do you agree with that? Right? If I want to turn n into this, like if this was r to the 5, and what I really wanted is r to the 4, okay, well, take the fifth r out, just, just pull them out the front, and what you'll be left with is a r to the n minus 1. That's the nth term in there. Except the nth term is really what we mean by the last term, right? That's L over there. So in fact, what we're about to write now here, A minus R L. If you want, you can put kind of a box around this because this is the GP equivalent of this guy, right? If you know what the last term is and the ratio and the first term, off you go. You can work out the whole sum, right? Let's quickly give it a go. I already worked out what A and R are. So I've got the first term. I've got the common ratio. What is the last term again? 3 to the 3n. 3 to the 3n. All divided by, now this guy is going to be still 1 take away negative 3. Right? Just like it was before. Now what have I got? 3 to the n. Double negative. So double negative. There's a 3 there, and there's a 3 to the 3n. What happens to the indices? 3 to 3n minus... This is a 1, right? Plus 1. 3n plus 1. Does that look familiar? Yeah? All divided by 4. Was that easier, or was it harder? Easier. 
I think it was easier because I didn't even know how many terms there were, okay? Um, admittedly, I had to do this work here, and I don't really, I don't think, you know, in, in, I mean, amidst the, the hundreds of things you need to memorize, I don't think this is particularly worth memorizing. It's a little bit like this guy. <laughs> okay? Don't worry, uh, I mean, if you want to memorize it, you know, go for your life. But in a, in a crowded brain, in a crowded brain, I would much prefer that you just memorize this. Right? Remember it's this guy, and then you divide it by whatever you want to get all the other versions of the Pythagorean identity. Okay? Uh, including 1 plus tan squared equals sec squared by dividing everything through by cos squared, right? So I, I would not memorize this guy. Personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't invest time memorizing you. You don't see him nearly enough to warrant, yes, I'll commit this to memory, and this will be very, very handy for me. Um, this kind of question here, where it happens to be particularly useful doesn't come up frequently, okay? So, so give yeah. The last term. Say that again? So they don't commonly give you the last term. They will give you the last term in exactly this kind of situation, right? Mm -hmm. Where you can't actually name what the last term is. It's, it's of indeterminate length. And the only way you can know when it ends, you, you can't say, oh, this has, you know, five terms or 15 terms. The whole point is, I don't know how many terms there are. And that's what makes the question challenging, okay? So it's in this particular situation that this is particularly useful, which is why I like it. I, I don't bother memorizing.